Yes. Oh my God. CES, one of the coolest tech events of the year showcasing some of the most cutting edge technology you've ever laid your eyes on. Part of that cutting edge technology includes the XR and gaming section, consisting of everything virtual reality and much, much more. Today I'm just going to briefly go over everything I got to see and try at CES. Let me know in the comments down below which of these products do you think should get their very own video. Alright, here we go. First thing I'm going to talk about is B-Haptics and their booth. This year at CES 2022, B-Haptics announced the world's first consumer haptic gloves. Coming in at 299 US dollars, they sound like a pretty good price. These gloves offer a haptic feedback point at the tip of every one of your fingers. They were hosting demos for Hand Physics Lab and Unplugged VR, which is a hand tracking guitar hero type game. These gloves were very easy to slide on and extremely comfortable to wear. I got to try them with Hand Physics Lab, which was pretty cool well the quest hand tracking was actually working i also got to try be haptics own mini game which allowed two players in an environment to pick up different objects and spells to hit or touch one another with my favorite part was probably shooting lightning out of my fingertips as the haptic sensation was way stronger than I had actually anticipated. Next up is the Tesla suit. Now, to be able to get a demo with the Tesla suit is a dream come true. I've been following the Tesla suit since 2015 and could only ever dream of having something like this to actually be able to put on my body. This is a full Ready Player One haptic suit that can track all of your movements and provide biometrics such as body temperature and heart rate back to the computer. This haptic suit uses electrostimulation haptics causing your muscles to contract simulating a haptic effect and I do have to say this is by far the coolest VR accessory I've ever tried. I had various groups of muscles triggered during this demo causing my muscles to contract more and more depending on the intensity of stimulation. I was able to try out a rainfall effect and it allowed me to feel precisely where the rain was falling on my body and then have the droplets slowly dissipate down my arm. But I think I'm going to have to wait a while before I'm able to get a Tesla suit because the Tesla suit is currently selling for around 13,000 US dollars. Not something that I can just whip out of my pocketbook. There are talks of producing a consumer version of the Tesla suit, but there isn't a clear date on when or what price it would be. So we'll have to see how that pans out. Here's the hoping we can have our own Tesla suit in the near future. Next on the agenda of items brings us to the XTEL 3 by VR Engineers. An 8K VR and mixed reality headset boasting a whopping 180 degree horizontal field of view. The XTEL 3 is aimed at simulation training for Air Force pilots and it does its job extremely well. This version of the XTEL has new and improved non-Fresnel lenses that allow for a wide FOV without having to worry about distortion. There's a built-in proprietary eye tracking that can automatically adjust to the IPD per user, which I thought was pretty amazing. In the 4K resolution mode, the headset ran at 75Hz, and in 2K resolution mode, the headset runs at 120Hz. What makes this headset so unique for flight simulation training, apart from the crystal clear lenses and wide FOV, is the mixed reality aspect. It can take the inside cockpit of a fighter jet and put it into the headset so you can touch everything that is in real life around you well, the windows of the simulator are transformed into virtual reality. One thing I always hear people say is the XTEL looks so big and uncomfortable, but this version they cut out a lot of weight and it actually felt lighter than an index on my head. Despite this being one of the coolest VR headsets I've worn, it's definitely out of the consumer range with it coming in at $11,500 for the mixed reality version or $8,900 for the non-mixed reality version. Super cool and is definitely an awesome resource for the Air Force and those who want to get into flight training, but not something that I'm going to be able to get anytime soon. On to the topic of hand tracking. Now, we all know that hand tracking is super cool with the Oculus Quest 2, but more times than less, it just doesn't work. That is where the Ultra Leap Gemini hand tracking system comes in. I got to first try out the Gemini hand tracking with the Vario XR3. Yes, the other insanely awesome, not consumer priced VR headset. And yes, the Vario XR3 is insane with the retina resolution displays. The Gemini hand tracking system on the Vario used the built-in cameras on the headset and it actually did a really good job of tracking where my hands were moving. But when I switched over to the Pico Neo 3 with the Ultra Leap's attached module, I was blown away by how smooth the hand tracking was. The device did lose tracking when it was out of that 170 degrees field of view, but it was world smoother than the hand tracking on the Oculus Quest. 
Oh, and I did get to hold the Lynx R1 in my hands and set it on my head, but unfortunately the battery was not holding a charge at all, so we were not able to test the Ultra Leap Gemini hand tracking on that particular device. I do say I regret not Kickstarter backing the device because the Lynx R1 feels like a super solid device that it's just gonna make ripples in the VR and AR industry. Time for another haptic device. Dare I say, with consumerism and practicality in mind, my favorite VR accessory that I'm gonna be able to own here in the near future. Behold, the Owo Vest. <coughs> Um, the Owo Vest. A haptic device very comparable to the Tesla suit, but at 1 29th the cost. That's right, you heard that right, 1 29th of the cost. The Owo Vest is very similar to the Tesla suit in the fact that it uses electronic stimulation to contract your muscles simulating a haptic effect. The design is pretty cool being that it's the same size as a t-shirt, it's super light, and it's breathable. While I was playing the demo with it on, it really made me want to avoid being hit by any of the drones because I actually felt a sting in my body alerting me where I was being shot from. There are 10 feedback zones, but in those zones they can replicate precise little pinches or bug bites or whatever you could think of. You'll be able to get 8 hours of battery life out of the shirt with it having a hot swappable battery pack allowing for continuous use. The best thing about it is it will only cost $450 which in comparison to the $13,000 Tesla suit, that's a pretty good price. And they're aiming to deliver the Owo shirt or Owo vest around October of this year so hopefully we'll all be able to get to try it out very soon here. There is an SDK that they have to implement it in many games just like Behaptics does, so hopefully a lot of these game companies will be able to take on to what this vest can actually do and also implement it in their game side by side with Behaptics. I definitely don't think the OO vest is a direct replacement for Behaptics, but I'm going to go into that in a video at a later date when I fully review the OO vest. Some honorable mentions, I got to try out the HTC Vive Pro 2, the HTC Vive Focus 3 with their special wrist trackers, some force feedback gloves by Sense Glove, an alternative to the Behaptics vest called the Skinetic, and hold the Tundra trackers in my hand. There will be an interview with Tundra hopefully coming out in the following weeks. Some content may be a little delayed as we have the Zenith Beta 2 coming out tomorrow. I will be live streaming that on twitch.tv slash dstormgames, so make sure to come drop a follow and check that out as it's going to be awesome because Zenith is a VR MMO a lot like Sword Art Online mixed with Final Fantasy. It's going to be one of the main games that I'm going to be playing and I'm very excited for it as today the release date was announced to be January 27th and we have been waiting two years since the Kickstarter for this game to finally come out. So super cool. So what do you think of these devices? What device is your favorite and what are you looking forward to being able to own here in the near future? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoy what you saw here today, feel free to subscribe as it's free and it helps me out a bunch. And go ahead and slippity slap that like button. Alright, until next time folks, remember, never give up. Peace out.